to the fifth annual Hot Dog Alumni Hall of Fame ceremony. My name is Tyler Stock, class of 2005. At this time, I'd like to recognize some of our distinguished guests, starting with Mayor Judy Sheets, FHS class of 1970, Superintendent of Community Schools of Frankfurt, Matt Rhoda, Frankfurt High School principal member of the class of 1996, Cindy Long, and president of the Frankfurt Hot Dogs Alumni Hall of Fame Board of Directors, Don Russ, class of 1964. We have some honored guests in the house as well. Um, from our inaugural class of 2018, Karen Lundell Kalowski. And Gary Good. From the class of 2019, Coach John Milhall. From the class of 2020, Dr. David Moore.
conduct Lieutenant Colonel James Rinchler. Here to present our second posthumous award is the Superintendent of Community School of Frankfurt, Matt Rhoda. Mary Gorman Herrick, class of 1912, was raised by one of the founders of the Farmers Bank, Abraham Clamro, and his wife, Viola. After Mary's mother tragically died in childbirth, Mary fell in love with game of golf when she attended the first Indiana Women's State Championship in 1922. She immediately started lessons and the next year entered the state tournament. A true pioneer of women's golf, she was a life member of the Frankfurt Country Club, the Highland Golf and Country Club of Indianapolis, and was a 30-year member of the Rules Committee of the Women's Western Golf Association. Mary Gorman Herrick's philanthropy extended to many organizations in Frankfurt, but perhaps none so generous as when she left through her estate a donation to the Frankfurt Community Library to build a new three-story wing. The addition to the original library now houses an art studio, a theater, meeting rooms, an art gallery, and is known as the Mary Gorman Herrick Wing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Gorman Herrick.
All right. Our first non posthumous inductee. some you might hear, uh, but I really kind of thought this over and uh, I wanted to say a few words before I get started. This is kind of out of my speech range, but I want to pay tribute uh, to my wife, uh, my kids, their spouses, their children, and our grandchildren. And uh, I have been blessed started. Success comes to those who we live and work with. Besides all the swimming team, team members that were mostly responsible for our program success, credit also goes to the parents, assistant coaches, fellow teachers, and the volunteers who helped us along the way. Special thanks goes to Jer Gary Joe Scott, uh, Stop, who's served as our swim team announcer for over 25 years, and he's still going. Time won't allow me to mention all the individual swimmers I would like to recognize. So rather, here are some reminders of the times and events we shared over the years. Now, many of you will realize these and recognize them, but the swimmers will. The tradition of the Mole Patrol, Golden Jock Days, Scaffold Diving, Family and Friends Trips, and the Batmobiles to the pool for fun swims while the coach did paperwork. <laughs> that brings up one of the many stories we, we shared about the 61 Chrysler I bought and painted Midnight Blue. The Batmobile had I beams as part of the frame structure covered with painted metal without rust proofing. As you remember, the uh, 50s and 60s, 
There were a lot of cars like that. We had to part with it, with the Batmobile, when one, on one of the many trips to the pool, one of the swimmers in the back seat noticed the floor mats were moving under his feet. <laughs> when we moved the mats, we could see the ground. <laughs> that was it for the Batmobile. I put it up for sale shortly thereafter. More fun time reminders, water basketball games, inner squad games, and of those, ones versus Clinton Central and some alumni games, water basketball. Some of the Central games were quite spirited. A couple times it was a bloodshed. <laughs> but we all had a good time. Meditation sessions, challenge sets, hall tag, Monty Hall swims. Meals in one of the swimmers' homes uh, after every home meet. After away meets, stop in fast food restaurants before heading home. Other age group memories were sharks and minnows. The Cisco meets with fathers grilling pork burgers during the meets. Bus rides to and from away meets. One story when one of the younger swimmers asked, how much longer before we get home? I was a driver and one time told the kids six more miles. After that trip, any time one of the young kids asked how, when are we going to get home, I would yell out six more miles. It didn't matter where we were. It soon became a tradition. Uh, another topic, Habitat Humanity has been in love for 33 years. Uh, due to various reasons, we are going to have to do some local restructuring. Lafayette Habitat is helping us right now to finish our latest new home in the Habitat North Middle Subdivision at the north end of John Street, Franker. Being unable to do many of the physical tasks of the building process, my role will be reduced. We are planning to provide funds for someone, possibly through the Lafayette affiliate, to assume construction leadership locally. I encourage any of you to serve here, or to serve here in your home area to volunteer for Habitat or another service group of your choosing. Finally, one of the programs we had success in and probably gave me, and did give me great satisfaction, was our Learn to Swim program. Uh, any leader or teacher knows the important, how important it is for individuals to learn skills that they can use lifelong. Some swimmers we had, some summers, we had up to 250 swimmers in the Learn to Swim program with usually only one paid assistant in the program. Team members provided additional assistance. The pro program consisted of 45 minute lessons every other weekday for four weeks, usually in June. Our program uh, was a simple one. The goal was to make all swimmers uh, deep water safe. Many started the program and unable to put their faces in the water and could not touch the bottom of the pool in the shallow end. Watching, watching them put their faces in the water, open their eyes underwater, hold their breath, work the push off the side and fly out to you, and then return to the side of the pool. And then dive for pennies on the bottom. Uh, and sometimes they were successful and sometimes they weren't. Uh, and if they agreed, we would help them by pushing them down to the bottom. <laughs> and that way they could get the pennies off the bottom. And you can't you, you to realize that. You take a chance, you know, <laughs> some parents are going to kill you. <laughs> but it really worked out well. They were so resourceful that some of them just picked the pennies up to the toes, bent their foot, got that penny off the bottom, 
They, they didn't, it didn't matter how they got it. They got the penny off the bottom. It was successful. Uh, and they usually learned uh, some, some other things later on. They work on learning to float and some basic strokes. Many learning to swim on their backs since they were not ready to do a rhythmic breathing. They always loved to jump in, the, jump in the water from the pool side. Even when they couldn't swim, many of them did. As they progressed, they moved from three and a half foot in to five feet, then to nine feet, then to the low board, and then to the high board before it was removed for safety reasons. <laughs> Some of them not caused by me. <laughs> to this day, one of the most satisfying things I cherished was one when one, one of our former program participants stops me somewhere to tell. To tell me we taught them to swim. I, I want to thank the hot dog all of me. I'm proud to join previous, present, and future members. Thank you.
I also played on the 2000 Arena Football League Championship team, which went 19-0 and, and still holds the distinction of having the best record in foot, pro football history. As I've told many of my friends over the years, when the Patriots or Colts were trying to go undefeated, they were not chasing the 72 Dolphins undefeated record. They were, not, in fact, chasing the 2000 Quad 16 winners. <laughs> These accomplish, accomplishments I just mentioned did not come easy for me, many as you know. I did not play a varsity down my, until my junior year and did not win a wrestling match my freshman year. As a matter of fact, I was a short fat kid growing up. <laughs> Hard work and dedication is what uh, allowed me to get where I'm standing today, standing in front of you. But I also was inspired and pushed by my great family, teammates, and coaches. I want to thank my family who inspired me and showed me what hard work meant. Thank you to my sister Amy. Also thank you to my uncle Tim and my grandpa Jim, who introduced me to wrestling and would, and would drive me across the state to find the best competition. And then would often ask me, boy, are you going to get tired of counting all the lights in these gyms for being on your back so much? <laughs> Well, I got tired of counting all those lights. Thank you to my grandma Jean, my wife Jenny, and my daughter's Paige Lydia. Thank you most of all to my mother, who was a single mom working three jobs to support us and truly showed me what hard work really meant. Next, I want to thank my mentors, Coach Vince Burpo and Coach Clarence Warden, who inspired me and not only taught me many lessons on the football field, and on the wrestling mat, but also taught me many lessons about life. Thank you to my teammates and my friends from Frankfurt High School, many of which I still talk to on a regular basis, and all are very successful. Thank you for the brotherhood and the competition. As one of these guys mentioned recently, our fun was different than most. It did not matter if we were playing Papa Shot in the basement of Best Home Furnishing or a pickup tackle football game Fun to us was winning. We believed we were the best players every time we showed up, no matter where we were. This is an attitude you, McLuhan, Bess, Harris, Cobb, Rakowski, Weaver, Foster, Freeman, Patterson, etc. The list goes on and on. Instilled in me is an attitude I still have when I start a business and when I walk in meetings today. It's a mindset that I seek, seek to instill in my daughters. I still remember bending over to put on my green ankle band before the state championship match at Market Square Arena and smiling because I knew I was going to win. In closing, I'm, again, I want to thank Frankfurt and everyone here for their support along the way and inspire me to work hard. I will always be proud to be a hot dog. Lastly, I would like to dedicate my home favorite Dutch to my brother, Jason Butler.
got to tell Chad things because I usually get emotional. So take the heat off a little bit. Um, so thanks for everybody. Thanks um, for letting me here. I'm honored to be here today. Um, I've never been good at public speaking. Um, I usually get emotional too. Um, so a little funny story was yesterday at the golf alley. Um, I talked to Bo, Bo Workman, who's a professional speech writer, and I asked him if he would write a speech for me again. <laughs> and uh, he said there's no amount of money that could convince him to write a speech. So I started to think for a second. The lottery was a billion dollars yesterday. And I said, what if I won the lottery? He says, come and talk to me if you win the lottery. <laughs> so needless to say, I'm writing my own speech. <laughs> so I'm really proud of growing up in Frankfurt. It's a wholesome, value-driven, what I call heart of America type of town. Um, I learned a lot of good lessons here. Um, it was just a, a good town to grow up on. And I realized that the older I got. Until my mom passed away, I was here for every holiday. Birthdays, special occasions, I was here for every special holiday. So I've been coming back here for years. Um, I also realized I learned a lot of valuable lessons here as I grew up and went to Frankfurt. Um, some that I still carry with to this day. Um, the last four years I've lived in Frankfurt were my high school years. Um, I still carry some of those lessons with me today. Um, so with that said, there's a lot of people here that I recognize and I want to thank. Um, first of all, the Hall of Fame Committee, thank you very much. Um, I know you guys work tirelessly for that. I for eight months a year um, and longer and put in long hours. But I want to give a special thanks to Don Stock, who um, I was glad he played with me. I suck at golf and <laughs> he was able to stick with me through the whole time. But I've got to know you in the past few years and I uh, want to thank you for all you've done. And special thanks to Bill Miller. So, good friends of mine, and I appreciate what you guys have done. Um, so, thank you, my mom and dad. Um, my, both have passed away. My dad passed away in 1982. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in the school, this school here. I was just down the hallway in science, and I think it was Mr. Rule, my science teacher, um, was dissecting a frog. I remember the smell even. Mr. Milholm came and got me and said, hey, there's a problem. So, So he taught me a lot of good, valuable lessons, but that's been a long time ago. And then my mom passed away three years ago. She'd be proud of me here today. Um, she was the largest influence of my life to date. Um, she was a great friend, and I see a lot of her friends here today. I want to thank you guys for coming. Um, and then there's my sister. Um, she's been a lot. Hard act to follow. She was valedictorian, way smarter than me, top, top few percent of the law school. Hard act to follow. Gives me advice, um, helps me a lot through my life, and I want to thank her for her um, And then, really, above all, my daughter and my wife. My wife's my best friend. Um, I'm late everywhere I go. I'm a procrastinator. She gets me where I need to go, gets me organized, and gets me there. So, I want to thank her. Um, she's a great mom and a great support. And my daughter, Anna, who's 18 and knows I procrastinate. Matter of fact, writing this, she was telling me I should have had it done months ago. I've been about it for six months. Um, she motivated me to keep going on it. So thank you guys, and really thank everybody for here um, for helping support me here. So at a young age, I knew I wanted to be an architect. I really don't remember anything I wanted to do past that. So as far back as I can remember, I wanted to become an architect. So I, preparing for this, I look back at some teachers that helped me, and one's been mentioned here today, um, but I thought about my career and who helped me. And, um, in my career as an architect, um, a lot of it's drafting and design work, and the first one that came to mind was Mr. Sorky. Um, he was my art teacher. He lived about two blocks from me, and his youngest son, Chad, was one of my best friends growing up, and as a matter of fact, his oldest son, Mark, is um, an inductee for the whole thing today. Congratulations. So I was down at their house a lot. He taught me how to think creatively, um, work with different media, and really just be creative in general. I remember things about their house that I liked, some of the artwork he worked on. Um, I had several teachers in college 
or in high school suggested I go to Ball State. So I went to Ball State, graduated from the five-year architecture program with a bachelor in architecture and another bachelor in environmental science. While I was there, I was in Delta Tall Delta fraternity. Um, but during college, I realized I learned a lot of valuable lessons from growing up in Frankfurt, which a lot of people call as a small town. You know, find a good mentor, give back, help others, be honest and fair, treat others how you want to be treated, do your best. Um, I also learned a lot of artistic ability, how to think about design and drafting and obey authority. And the last two, about drafting, technical drawings and obey authority comes from Mr. Morphin. Um, so he, I took his class, um, he taught me how to think two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally and do drafting. Um, but the story is not going to be fine unless you know he's a wrestling coach. So one day in wrestling, um, in one day in class, he asked me, he asked everybody to put their drafting tools up, which was in a corner of the room, which was just right down the hall. And when he would tell us we were supposed to get up and do it, probably being the procrastinator I am, I delayed. He walks over to my desk and asks why I hadn't gotten to put my tools up. And before I knew it, I was in a headlock on the ground <laughs> and being held down. And that is the honest truth. <laughs> Today, that would not be allowed. <laughs> but the good thing is, is I learned a very valuable lesson about how to obey your authority, how to obey your teacher. I carry that with me to this day. And he did teach me some good valuable lessons on drafting. So after college, um, I worked at one of the largest Indianapolis firms, architecture firms in Indianapolis. And I realized I'm a small town boy, and I didn't love living in Indy, so I moved to West Lafayette, where I started an architecture and engineering firm in 97. Mr. Stock mentioned um, we hit our 25 year anniversary this June. We currently have 33 employees. Our main office is in West Lafayette. We've had an office in Indianapolis that's closed. We had an office for many years in North Carolina. And due to staffing and COVID, we did shut it down, um, which is unfortunate. I didn't want to see that go. But I've been blessed to have worked on many cool projects over the years and worked with some pretty cool um, um, clients and projects. Over the, actually it's been 31 years since I've been doing this. Um, some really neat projects are school projects, like this school here. Um, I work with Frankfurt, Lafayette, West Lafayette, Kokomo, just to mention a few of the school systems I've worked with. I've been multiple, like our several YMCA projects, car dealerships, BMW, Audi, Chevrolet, throughout really Indiana. And restaurants, Chipotle's and Callister's and some high-end restaurants. I've done a lot of houses and commercial buildings, just to mention a few. I've worked with some pretty, my job has allowed me to work with some pretty cool people. Um, one of the ones I'm, I'm proud of but was fun to work with was uh, Mr. Jim Mercer, owner of the Colts. Um, I've done some design work for the sports complex in Indianapolis. I've designed several buildings for him, Lake House, uh, the indoor pool building for his common house in Colbert Lake House. Indoor shooting range and a bowling alley. Also done that in your home, which was a great guy and got to get fun to get to know him. It exposed me to a doctor who specializes in regenerative medicine. Um, I designed his house and he can actually grow back um, parts of your body if you're missing. Um, he's been on 60 minutes. I designed everything from a small room addition to an 800,000 square foot building, from a single story building up to a seven story building. But really to date, one of the projects that's probably been the best to me for multiple reasons was the high school. One of, one of the reasons why it was allowed me to come back and visit my mom. It allowed me to be back in high school and the teachers that were still here that when I was here. Uh, Mr. Morgan was um, on the committee. It was fun talking to that, Mr. Niehaus. So it was really fun. That project meant a lot. It was a $30 million project. We added eight new classrooms. We enlarged 14 classrooms. We added a new entry in the courtyard out front, which houses guidance and administration. And it's up to date with the new security that needs to be in place in schools. Um, which I didn't see this really cool. So I would have that. I would have said that a bit differently. Um, <laughs> so now I'm not nervous. Um, we upgraded the LED lighting, um, LED lighting HVAC system, um, which I understand is down in the theater. <laughs> Could be a design error, but I can have to see. Um, so that this project's been great. This room right here was one that was really fun. It was an upgrade. That past that fourth movable wall it used to be a courtyard into the 
Art Room, um, that was Art Room underway. So many, many things changed here. Uh, one of the school board members said, we don't want it to look like it's been out of the We do want it to look very similar to what it is. And it's been an extremely fun project. Other projects I've worked on in Frankfurt, which are dear to my heart, are just projects in Frankfurt. NHK, we did a 63,000 square foot warehouse uh, manufacturing in Barber Street. Um, McDonald's Incorporation, Frito Lay. We did a recovery center called 180 out in the industrial park. Um, we got the new police station. It just broke ground here recently. Um, nickel plate flats. I heard someone say, say they're staying there. Airbnb is downtown. Frankfurt, it's a four story apartment building. Um, but I've been fortunate to do many projects, but as you mentioned, one of the projects I really have enjoyed is buying a Riley property and turning it into a residential subdivision. So that's been a lot of fun. So I feel like I've come full, full circle. My last four years in Frankfurt were here um, at high school. I designed many buildings here and I get to come back here a lot. But I just want to thank everybody for um, this honor.
The first thing I want to say is this is an enormously humbling uh, privilege uh, to accept this honor, and I thank you for consideration. Uh, indeed, there's a very amazing people who have already been inducted, and certainly many more to come. I will say, however, that I have one of the most unique situations in my speech, and that I had some comments written down and was sort of so moved by some of the events that happened at the golf scramble, and I didn't play very well. My son's happy to tell you about his day. Um, but there were some events here that changed, and I've just sort of been mulling through there. So my unique experience is that I get to sort of wing it a little bit in front of my speech teacher from high school, which no one else here will have to endure. Yesterday was really interesting, and I don't get back here to frequently uh, deal with other people or engage with other people in the community outside of my family for obvious reasons. Many of us have spread to different places. Um, it doesn't affect our feelings for our hometown and certainly the memories we had in high school. I was meeting people that I sat in our driveway and worshipped as athletes playing with my father because I was too small to play and wasn't allowed to at the time. People I admired watching grow up playing basketball, sitting in the stands, and finally I, I got my turn. But my point is that the conversations and meeting and greeting these people, they were natural, wholesome, welcoming conversations from people who shared the same bar. It wasn't just basketball, it wasn't the golf thing. It was here. And it, it really, it, it was just eye-opening. And, and I started to think through the purpose of this. And as Cindy said, you know, there is a mission to this beyond the honors. It's, it's, it's the culture and the perpetuation of what we believe together, all of us, that Frankfurt High School means not only to those of us who graduated, but more particularly what it means for the children to follow. None of this could be done without significant help from a lot of people who have influenced our lives. And um, in no particular order, and there's no way I can name every single uh, teacher, but in particular, obviously, I'm certainly not going to leave you out, Mr. Henderson, Marty Henderson. Um, I think of others, Mr. Shepard, Mr. Schilling, um, uh, science teacher and Jack Palmer, and certainly Connie Melhorn, whom I will get to in a minute. <laughs> at, at the end of this, if I get ahead of myself, please don't let me leave without my confession. I, I do have to confess to something today before I finish. <laughs> Naturally, we have friends and we have, uh, from a sports standpoint, teammates have been very instrumental in this. I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, probably the most influential player I had the privilege of playing with, him, uh, Mr. Larry Kingery. I didn't get to play with him much, but he taught me a lot. And the advantage was, I think, in anything in life, when we put ourselves in competition with or working with people who have better skills, more knowledge, it can only force us to improve and to pursue things. And, and I will tell you that in playing with Larry, and very good, I'm sure, will corroborate this, if you weren't paying attention and you happened to be open, that ball was going to hit you in the face. And you learned that once or twice, and then you were always paying attention. One of my very first practices on the varsity team as a freshman, uh, Mr. Milhorn had to come into the locker room at the end fairly quickly when we were done to make sure that Larry wasn't going to follow through on beating me up. <laughs> because I had smarted off to him after he said something to me. And so nonetheless, a very dear friend of mine. The other thing that I think is important that you all will acknowledge and share is that we've all developed relationships with people that have lasted decades beyond the time that we've either left the school or moved away. I would certainly be wrong to not mention Will Grady, um, who now is a friend of mine for nearly 50 years. Um, fish, all kinds of crazy stories I could share with you, but 
communicate weekly, see each other as often as we can. He's been a very dear part of this, as has his family. But we, none of us can do any of this without our family. We have grandparents, parents who have been very influential. Um, we have siblings who can be very critical at times, but always supportive. And then certainly our, our children. And I'm blessed to have some of mine here, my daughter, my son, my daughter's boyfriend. And kids who have what we want from the students graduating here, desires to protect the rights of others legal profession, serve our country, and save animals, take care of the sick and the healthy, wherever that goes. And it's with that, I think, that we are here, each of us is here, and we need to move forward. So my point in, in this is that these types of dreams are what we want to foster for the students who graduate from Frankfurt. A lot of people at the Golf family yesterday, a lot of faces in here, I'm sorry I don't recognize and probably don't recognize me. young, old, different generations, but you're here because you're supporting not just us, but this culture, the school, and what we can do for our children. Regardless of their desires, their career paths, their walks of life, it's incumbent upon all of us to foster those dreams to support our teachers and all the staff that make them effective in our school system. That's the legacy we all want. I'm sure that's the legacy you all want for every child who walks through our school system. I want to be there to help, and I'm, I'm proud to be in this position um, to be part of that. So, this is not all. Here, here's my confession. I, folks, I suck at typing. <laughs> and I, went, I took a typing class, and of course she was a teacher, and I learned very well all the grammar, well you can tell me when we're done speaking, all the grammar stuff and everything that she taught. Typing wasn't my deal. And one day, and I, she was bragging to my wife that I would come in after class and it was over for the day, and I would practice, and I went to my dad's office and I tried to practice, and just, it just wasn't in the cards. So one day I was in Mr. Kersey's phys ed class and we were doing the presidential fitness, fitness thing. And you had to run an 800 yard race. <laughs> My time wasn't what I wanted to be. So I said, all right, look, I'm gonna run it again. Obviously I didn't run faster the second time. But by the time we finish it, we had to go change your clothes. I'm heading to typing class. I got a headache, I'm sweating profusely. I don't feel well because I ran a lot farther than I ever liked to run. And we started a typing project in her class. And back then, for those of you who were young, we didn't have keyboards. We had manual typewriters and we had electric typewriters. I was on a manual typewriter that day. And we're typing through it, and I knew I'd ruined this project already. I didn't feel well. Please, that's my excuse. So I got mad. And I returned the manual typewriter so hard I threw the carriage onto the floor. <laughs> Mrs. Melholland, Mrs. Mel, my typewriter broke. Well, what'd you do? I don't know, it just fell off. <laughs> so I feel safe sharing that story today because my wife and I purchased one of these as an antique in a store at one point in time. So I think replacing it would have absolutely no purpose in helping us. But I at least wanted to come clean with that. <laughs> this has been an amazing weekend for me. It's an amazing pleasure. I've connected with people I hadn't seen and talked to in a long, long time. I thank you so much for the privilege and the honor of being here and for the opportunity to enjoy that. Thank you all for being here and for your support of this wonderful school system. Thank you.
Our next inductee was a member of the class of 1975, Mark Sawicki. He graduated from Ball State in 1979 prior to joining the Navy. Mark is a graduate of the Navy Fighter Weapons School, more properly known, or popularly known as Top Gun. Mark was nominated as Navy Flight Instructor of the Year in 1988. Mark is currently a Boeing 737 captain based in Miami. Mark is also very involved with mission work, supporting educational programs for children in the Guatemala City dump region. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Sawicki. So then I asked, and then Pat asked me for my bio. So I had to sit down with a couple old resumes and come up with a bio. I asked my wife, Janet, if she would take a look at it prior to sending it back to Pat. And so she looked at it and she goes, hey, this is good. I think I can use this for your obituary. <laughs> I had a unique perspective during my high school career because my father was a teacher here. From 1962, when the doors of this school first opened, until his retirement, 1996 and for four years I had the privilege of having him as one of my teachers my father was the ultimate teacher in and out of the classroom and he was loved and respected by his students when I was growing up he was constantly introducing me to new things such as marathon running motorcycle riding fishing camping and most importantly sailing which to this day is my favorite thing to do when I was in the sixth grade, my dad and I began painting houses together during the summer months. Now, house painting was hard, dirty work, but it, it had instilled in me a strong work ethic, work ethic and enabled me to pay for my college education. My dad could be a fairly strict boss on the job. He knew how to motivate, encourage, and challenge me, but he did have a weakness, and I knew how to exploit it. We could be on a large house painting project on a hot July morning, both of us sweaty, covered in paint and paint scrapings. And I would look over at my dad and I'd say, hey dad, the wind's blowing about 10. Now 10 knots was the perfect wind speed to sail our Hobie 16 Cadillac. <laughs> my dad would just look at me, shake his head and say, son, just keep painting. A couple seconds later I'd say, hey dad, it looks like it's blowing pretty steady out of the east. You see, an easterly wind was the perfect wind direction for sailing at Eagle Creek. Again, my dad would look at me, shake his head, and say, son, just keep painting. I'd give it about 10 minutes. I'd look at my dad, and I'd say, hey, dad, it's Tuesday, which meant we would have the entire lake to ourselves. My dad would look at me, and you could see the defeat in his eyes, and he'd say, son, pack up your brushes. We're going sailing. <laughs> Looking back, it's obvious the incredible impact my father had in all aspects of my life. My father's good friends were fellow legendary teachers, Schilling, 
Prosser, Henderson, Bennett, just to name a few. These guys were not only my teachers, but they were part of our family social circle, and I witnessed time and time again their impeccable character. Being a teacher is not something these guys just did, it's who they were. When I was in high school, I was in the middle of the pack academically, but they never passed up an opportunity to provide some encouragement or to challenge me to set the bar just a little bit higher. One of my fondest memories growing up in Frankfurt was the day that Jack and Kevin Scheid invited me to go flying at the local airport. Now, Kevin and I were about 10 years old, and this was going to be my first time in an airplane. Once we were airborne, Jack took the opportunity to do some instructing. He showed me how to work the controls and told me what the instruments were telling us and demonstrated how to make the airplane do what you wanted it to do. Looking back, who could have imagined it? After 43 years in aviation and over 30,000 flight hours, the impact that first flight would have on my career. It's because of positive role models like my father, my teachers, and people like Jack Shy that I will always place great importance on spending time teaching and mentoring our young people. You never know the impact it can have in their life. She's my life partner and best friend, and 
someone I could always turn to for advice and reassurance when I needed. In fact, on our way out here, I told her I was a little nervous about accepting this award. And as usual, she gave me some very sound advice. She said, don't try to be funny or charming or try to sound intelligent. Just be yourself. <laughs> so, as I thought about what I wanted to say today, I was reminded of the story of the young salesman who had just lost a big sale. When his boss asked him what happened, the salesman said, well, you know, it's like the old cliche, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And at this point, his boss jumped up and shouted at him, who in the hell told you to make him drink? Your job was to make him thirsty. <laughs> well, that's what my teachers and the people here in Frankfurt did for me when I was growing up. They made me thirsty. Thirsty for knowledge and understanding. Thirsty for curiosity and learning. Thirsty for achievement and success. And it worked. I find that as I approach my 70th birthday later this year, I'm still trying to quench that thirst. Now, I too have a confession to make. And this will not come as a surprise to many of my high school friends. When I was in high school, I couldn't wait to get out of Franklin. Now, don't get me wrong. Franklin was a great place to grow up. Many of my best friends then are still my best friends today. And many of my fondest memories are the experiences I had growing up here. But I wanted to leave Frankfurt because my parents and my teachers and coaches, my friends' parents, and many other people in the community made me want to go out and explore the bigger world and to find my place in it. They were role models who simply by the way they lived their lives encouraged me to expand my horizons and see the possibilities. Carol and I have lived just outside of Washington, D.C. for 43 years. And obviously, we love it there, but Frankfurt will always be our hometown. It's where our roots are. Frankfurt is the place where I began to discover who I was, what I believed in, and how I wanted to live my life. And the education I received here was a big part of that. My friend Richard Worman, who founded the TED conferences, and many of you may have listened to the TED talks over the years, likes to say that education is simply remembering what you're interested in. It was here in this community and in this building that I began to discover what I was interested in. And I've been chasing those interests ever since. My favorite definition of education comes from Plato. Plato believed that the ultimate aims of education are human happiness and the welfare of society. He defined education as that particular learning which leads you throughout your life to hate the things that should be hated and to love what should be loved. And I learned that here too. My parents made sure of that. They instilled in my brother and me the values that have guided me throughout my life and that Carol and I have tried to teach our own kids. Work hard, strive to do your best. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. Stand up for what you believe in, hold yourself accountable, and treat other people with dignity and respect. Sometimes I can still hear my dad telling me, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Act accordingly, you might learn something. And from my early years at Riley through junior high and high school, I was blessed with teachers who reinforced those values. Larry Adamson didn't just teach me history way back in seventh grade. He inspired me to do my best. He was the first teacher who ever told me I was a good writer. Bob Schilling didn't just teach me math. He taught me what it meant to be accountable to myself and others. Aidan Long didn't just teach me music. He nurtured in me a love of all kinds of music that has continued throughout my life. Ron Shepard didn't just teach me government. He taught me that by coming involved in the political process, I could make a difference. And Marty Henderson didn't just teach me how to write and give a speech. He introduced me to a whole new world that became my life's work. And he gave me the confidence to pursue it. 
He also introduced me to theater and instilled in me a love of theater that has grown throughout my life and that still uh, has grown, is growing today. In the beginning, Mr. Henderson was just my teacher, then he became my friend, then he became my mentor, and for the last 50 years, he's been my friend. Thank you, Mark. What made these teachers and others I can mention special is that they saw something in me I didn't see in myself. They also had a passion for what they were teaching. They cared about it, and more importantly, they made me care about it too. They made me thirsty. One of the purposes of the Hot Dog Hall of Fame, as the principal mentioned, is to motivate and inspire today's students to contribute to the community and the broader world. So in closing, I would like to direct just a few words to them. You know, we live in a rapidly changing world, yet as fast as it's growing today, this is the slowest it will ever be. Having spent nearly 30 years at AARP writing about aging issues, one thing I can tell you is that you're, most of you are going to live a long time, longer than any, any previous generation. Research shows that today, a 10-year-old child has a 50-50 chance of living to the age of 104. And some have predicted that the first person ever to live to be 150 is alive today. These kids are not only going to live longer, they're going to work longer, and many of them will work in jobs that haven't even been invented yet. I also learned that if you want to live a good life when you're older, you have to begin when you're young. Frankfurt High School can prepare, prepare you not only to adapt to this new world, but also to create it, if you let it. Now many of these kids will hear this and wonder whether they will be equipped to compete, let alone succeed in this new world they're facing, especially coming from a small Midwestern town like Frankfurt, Indiana. I wondered the same thing at that age. But over the course of my life and career, I came to realize that any success I've had has come not in spite of growing up in Frankfurt, but because of it. Life is an adventure, and theirs is just beginning. You're laying the foundation here that will allow you to continue to learn and grow and become the person you always want to be. But what you do with that is up to you. So regardless of the career path or paths you decide to follow, I urge you to take all that Frankfurt High School and this community have to offer. Develop a curiosity for knowledge, a quest for understanding, and a love of learning. Use this time to explore and discover what you're interested in. And above all, stay thirsty, my friend.
uh, talk with our inductees. Um, and also the Hot Dog Festival is going on this weekend, so feel free to head downtown and enjoy that as well. So anyway, one more round of applause and thank you everybody.